Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Ronkland Public Library and today we're going to be reading another book from the Chickadee nominee list. Today's book is called The First Blade of Sweetgrass. The First Blade of Sweetgrass is written by Suzanne Greenlaw and Gabriel Frey and illustrated by Nancy Baker. So it's written and illustrated by main authors and illustrators. And author Suzanne Greenlaw is a citizen of the Holton Band of Maliskeet Indians, and author Gabriel Frey is a citizen of the Passamaquoddy Nation. Let's see what happens in our story about sweetgrass. You see the blade of sweetgrass right there? As grandmother's blue truck crested the hill, Moscon saw the ocean for the first time that day. The water's surface sparkled in the sunlight. Look, Okomi, is that where we pick sweetgrass? Moscon asked excitedly. Yes, Moscon, grandmother said. Sweetgrass grows in the salt marsh where the river meets the ocean. Sweetgrass must love where it is wet and salty. My grandmother brought me here when I was a girl. She was my first sweetgrass teacher. Every summer I would help her pick sweetgrass to weave into her baskets. So she's teaching her granddaughter just like she once learned from her own grandmother. Our people have been coming here to pick sweetgrass for generations. We call it well ima askil, and we use it in our ceremonies as well as baskets. Sweetgrass is a spiritual medicine for us. Walking into the marsh, Moscon saw the grass dance with the wind. All the grasses shone bright against the sun. Okomi, how do I tell which grass is sweet grass? She asked. All the grass looks the same. I'll show you, Tuss, said Grandmother. But then you must try to find it on your own while I pick enough sweet grass for the baskets I will make next summer. Grandmother stopped in the shade of the tree and put down her basket. This is where we'll pick, she said. It's important to remember that we never pick the first blade of sweet grass. If we never picked the first blade, then we'll never pick the last one. We must make sure there will be sweet grass here for the next generation. That's an important part, isn't it? Leaving more grass to grow babies, to spread all around, so they never pick the first blade of grass. Come on, Tuss, Grandmother said. Bend down and look at the grasses closely. Sweet grass has a shiny green tassel and blades and purple stem, and it gives itself to you. If you tug lightly on a piece of sweet grass, it will let go. If you have to pull hard, you are not pulling sweet grass. I see it, Okomi, Moscon said confidently. I know how to pick sweet grass. Moscon got down on her knees and was enveloped by grass. She could see her grandmother's head through the tips of the tall grass. The air felt cooler close to the ground and the thin whine of mosquitoes grew distant. Moscon looked down at the purple stemmed sweetgrass, but all the grasses looked the same. Frustrated, she started to pull at any stem she could reach. Some broke off as she tugged and others pulled right out of the soil. Moscon stood up with a handful of grass. Okomi, look at all the sweet grass I picked, she said. Grandmother smiled. Tuss, this is a good first try, but that's not sweet grass. I'll show you again. She knelt beside Moscon and said, first, you have to look at the different grasses 
and get to know them. Do you see this grass with a thick stalk and a light green color? That's not sweet grass. And this plant with the small white flowers, that's not sweet grass either. Sweet grass is shiny emerald green with a purple bottom. Let's see if you can see it from here. They're tiny details, so it's a little hard to see. But here is a lighter colored grass. This grass has little flowers and the sweet grass has purple down at its roots. Can you see that at home? It is tricky to see. Sit here, take your time. Your ancestors are here with you. My grandmother is here with you, helping you. Moscon sat in the cool air and watch the color of the grass shift with the wind. A large bird flew into the marsh, then glided into the water. She looked at her grandmother and saw that she already had picked lots of sweet grass. Moscon closed her eyes. Can you close your eyes at home? She closed her eyes and thought about her grandmother as a little girl in the very same place. Can you imagine that? Your grandmother as a young person, as a young girl? She thought about her ancestors here in the marsh. In the, sorry. She thought about her ancestors here in the marsh. Slowly, the smell of sweet grass drifted by her. It was the same sweet grass hay smell that was in her grandmother's basket room. Moscon opened her eyes and smiled. In the distance, she could see her ancestors picking sweet grass in the marsh with her. She looked down at the sweet grass again. The beautiful emerald green color of the sweet grass popped out from all the other grasses. She could see it. Moscon reached eagerly to pick the first blade of sweet grass she saw, but then she stopped. Remembering her grandmother's words, Moscon reached past the first blade of sweet grass and touched, tugged lightly on the next one. She felt the roots let go of the soil as the grass gave itself to her hand. Look, Okomi! I have sweet grass, Moscon exclaimed. Kili kasat, Tus, that's right, grandmother said. Next, I will teach you how to braid sweet grass for baskets. And look at all the handmade basket designs. The grandmother can make this and someday she can teach her granddaughter to make them too. Aren't they beautiful? Moscon picked while cat's paws of wind chased each other in darker fans on the blue bay near the birds. She was excited to get home and show her parents all the sweet grass she had picked. Perhaps next summer, she would teach her younger sister, Ala Mosset, how to pick sweet grass. She would pass it on to someone else. The end. Great listening, everyone. Here's a note from author Suzanne and author Gabriel. The Wabanaki Confederacy, or the people of first light, comprises of the Maliseet, the Mi'kmaq, the Abenaki, the Passamaquoddy, and the Penobscot nations. Our territories once covered present day Maine, parts of Quebec, and Maritime Province of Canada. Though our lands are much reduced today, the Wabanaki remain a thriving and vibrant community. There's more to read here, so I highly suggest checking out this book, but I wanted to share the words that they shared with us today in their story. We have Okomi, which means grandmother. Moscon, the name of the little girl, Moscon, means blue sky. Alamosit, which was the name of the little sister, 
Alamaset means hummingbird. We have kuli kusa uh, kuli kuli kisut, which means good job. We have tus, which means granddaughter. It's a term. Oh, it means tus means daughter, a term of endearment. And then we have walima kusil or sweetgrass. I hope you all enjoyed this story and I highly recommend you checking out the first blade of sweetgrass to learn more about the Wabanaki Nation and to learn about sweetgrass. What did we learn today about sweetgrass? It has a special color. It has a purple stem, a purple root. And if you tug gently, it comes right from the soil. And also, never pick the first blade. I hope you all enjoyed this story and I can't wait to reach you all soon. Bye-bye.